Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to subtract decimals. We will first take a look at subtraction problems involving two decimals, and then we will move on to subtraction problems involving decimals and whole numbers. So we will go over a variety of subtraction problems involving decimals. Let's jump into number one, where we have seven and four tenths minus two and nine tenths. Now, the first thing that we need to do when we have a subtraction problem involving decimals is to line up the decimals. So let's set up number one by lining up the decimals. So we have seven and four tenths minus two and nine tenths. So you can see that those decimals are lined up and that's going to line up all of the places. So for this example, the ones place and the tenths place. Now our second step is to use placeholder zeros if necessary. Now for number one, we're not going to use any placeholder zeros. We don't need them. But for numbers two and three, we will. So we will see what those are used for in our next examples. So now we just subtract, starting with the tenths place. So we have four minus nine, which we are going to need to borrow here. So we borrow from the seven, this is now six, and we end up with 14 minus nine, which gives us five. Then we bring the decimal straight down into the answer. The decimal is going to be lined up throughout the entire problem. Then we move over to the ones place where we have six minus two. That gives us four. And this is our final answer, four and five tenths. So seven and four tenths minus two and nine tenths equals four and five tenths. Let's move on to number two, where we have 18 and 61 hundredths minus five and 752 thousandths. So let's line this problem up. So we have 18 and 61 hundredths minus five and 752 thousandths. Now we move to our next step. So we need to use placeholder zeros here. Notice that our problem looks a little offset. It doesn't really look lined up, but we actually are because our decimals are lined up. Therefore, our places are lined up. It's just that 18 and 61 hundredths only goes to the hundredths place and then five and 752 thousandths goes to the thousandths. So this looks a little offset. So what we need to do, we need to use a placeholder zero. That way, both of these numbers go to the thousandths place. Now our problem looks a little more lined up and organized. And we actually need that zero in order to subtract here. We can't just bring that two straight down into our answer because there's a zero above that too. So we need to go through the subtraction process. Now remember, zeros to the right of decimal digits do not change the value of the number. So 18.610 is equivalent to 18.61. So we're not changing the value of anything here. So we're able to do this. Now that we've lined up the decimals and used a placeholder zero, we can subtract. So let's start with the thousandths place. We have zero minus two, which we need to borrow. So let's borrow from the one. This is now zero. And now we have 10 minus two, which gives us eight. Now we have zero minus five. So we need to borrow again. And we end up with 10 minus five. That gives us five. Then we have five minus seven, we need to borrow again. And now we have 15 minus seven, that gives us eight. Bring the decimal straight down into our answer. And now we have seven minus five, that gives us two. And then we have a one in the tens place. So this is our final answer, 12 and 858 thousandths. So 18 and 
61 hundredths minus 5 and 752 thousandths equals 12 and 858 thousandths. Lastly, moving on to number three, we have 49 and 237 thousandths minus 21 and 8 tenths. So let's line up the decimals here. 49 and 237 thousandths minus 21 and 8 tenths. Now that we have our decimals lined up, we can see that one of our numbers goes to the thousandths place and the other only goes to the tenths. So let's use placeholder zeros. That way, both of these go to the thousandths. So we'll need two placeholder zeros right here. And now both numbers go to the thousandths place and we are able to subtract. Let's start with the thousandths place here where we have seven minus zero. That gives us seven. Then we have three minus zero. That gives us three. Then we have two minus eight. So we need to borrow. And we end up with 12 minus eight, which gives us four. Then we bring our decimal straight down into the answer. Next, we have eight minus one. That gives us seven. And then four minus two is two. So we end up with 27 and 437 thousandths. So 49 and 237 thousandths minus 21 and 8 tenths gives us 27 and 437 thousandths. So there's our section on subtraction involving two decimals. Let's move on to decimals and whole numbers. Here's our section on subtraction problems involving decimals and whole numbers. So either a decimal minus a whole number or a whole number minus a decimal. Now, whenever we have a subtraction problem involving a decimal and a whole number, we use the same steps we use when subtracting two decimals. Line up the decimals, use placeholder zeros if necessary, and subtract. Let's jump into number one, where we have 13 minus four and 64 hundredths. Our first step is going to be to set this problem up by lining up the decimals. Now we have a whole number here, 13. Remember, the decimal point goes to the right of the ones place, to the right of the whole number. So we can put a decimal point right here for 13 that we can use to line this problem up. Typically, if we just have a whole number, we write it without a decimal point. But here, we are using the decimal point to line up the problem. So we are including it. Now we can set this up. So we have 13 decimal point minus four and 64 hundredths. Now at this point, do not just bring the six and the four straight down into the answer. There are actually zeros above those digits. So we will need to go through the subtraction process. So our problem is lined up, the decimals are lined up, but it does look a little offset here. So we can use placeholder zeros to make this look a little more lined up and organized. And we actually need these zeros in order to go through the subtraction process. So since four and 64 hundredths goes to the hundredths place, we need two zeros right here. That way 13 goes to the hundredths place as well. Now those zeros to the right of the decimal point are not changing the value of that 13. That's still 13. So we're able to do this. We're not changing the value of anything here. Now we're ready to subtract. So let's start with the hundredths place. We have zero minus four, which we're going to need to borrow. So we need to go all the way over to the three, borrow. This is now two. Then we have 10 here, which is now nine. And then we end up with 10 minus four, which gives us six. Then we have nine minus six, that gives us three. Then we have our decimal. Bring the decimal straight down into the answer. The decimal is lined up throughout the entire problem. 
Then we have two minus four, which we need to borrow. So we borrow from this one, which is now zero. And now we have 12 minus four, which gives us eight. And this is our final answer, eight and 36 hundredths. So 13 minus four and 64 hundredths equals eight and 36 hundredths. Let's move on to number two, where we have 28 and 8 tenths minus 9. So let's set this problem up by lining up the decimals. Now for our whole number, 9, the decimal goes right here. So we have 28 and 8 tenths minus 9, and then the decimal point. Now we need a placeholder zero. But before we write that in, notice the difference between number one and number two. For number one, we subtracted from the placeholder zeros, so we needed to borrow. For number two, we're going to end up with eight minus zero in the tenths place, which gives us eight. So we will end up with eight in the tenths place of our answer. So depending on if we have a whole number minus a decimal, or a decimal minus a whole number, that impacts how these problems are going to work out. So something to keep in mind. Since 28 and 8 tenths goes to the tenths place, let's use a placeholder zero right here. That way nine goes to the tenths place as well. And now we can subtract. So we start with eight minus zero in the tenths place. That gives us eight then we can bring the decimal straight down. Next, we have eight minus nine, which we need to borrow here. So this two is now a one, and we have 18 minus nine. That gives us nine, and then we have a one. So our final answer, 19 and eight tenths. So 28 and eight tenths minus nine gives us 19 and 8 tenths. So there you have it. There's how to subtract decimals. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.